everybody, Gazette Sports Editor Eric Schmolt here. John Barry along with him. We're here with Prep Spot Light, your weekly look at the high school football scene. Uh, John, it's week one. You can count down the hours now until the season begins. Uh, your thoughts just on the exciting time it is here as the season gets started. Well, I think more than anything, it, it, you talked about is the excitement. Um, you know, kids are tired of hitting each other and, and they want to get out there. And, and this time of year, when everybody's 0-0, zero and zero, you look forward to that first game, uh, whether it's running out of the tunnel at Monterey Stadium or getting on a bus, making the trip up north to, uh, you know, some prairie or Verona or wherever it might be. Uh, a lot of excitement in the air right now. And, you know, I know the Craig kids behind us that are practicing, uh, a lot of hooting and holler going on right now. They know that uh, game day is two days away. Yeah, we're down here in the Craig Bowl. They're getting ready to take on Beloit Memorial on Friday night down at Monterey Stadium. Parker will be going up to uh, Middleton on Friday. Uh, just a day or two away here, depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, this is uh, our weekly segment. We're going to take you through the week's best games. We're going to take you through uh, anything big that's happened in the past week. And uh, in week one, we're just going to take you through a couple of the teams we're looking at here in the area to do some big things and what we've got on tap. So we'll start uh, across town at Parker, uh, coming off uh, second straight two and seven season. Like I said, they're going up to Middleton on Friday. And uh, you talked to Coach Eric Skripchak a little bit for our football preview. Hopefully everybody picked it up here on Wednesdays. And the it's Sports on Bible. <laughs> on GazetteExtra.com if you haven't seen it yet, so you can check it out there. But what have you seen from Parker, heard from them uh, heading into this season that maybe catches your eye? Well, like I said, it's year three of the Skripchak uh, regime, and, and it's, it's about building blocks and, and taking steps forward to get that program back to uh, – you know, being a, a difference maker, so to speak, in the Big Eight. Uh, struggled the first couple of years, and I think any time with a new coach and a new program, that tends to happen. But, you know, Coach Skripchak, I think, is very optimistic heading into uh, 2014. A tough opener, though, with Middleton, a uh, team they haven't beaten since 2006. So the Vikings, uh, a tough road to host, so to speak, that first week, but certainly uh, capable of, of going up there and competing. Uh, Logan Coulter returns a quarterback, a kid that uh, athletic and Started the last three games last year. They've got a couple of weapons, uh, one being Giovanni Sanchez, the running back. And then against the wild card would be Juan Harris, the, the massive six foot five, uh, 365 pound sophomore. That's, that all? That's all. That's, yeah. that's all the bigger they get. I don't know if they had a helmet big enough for him, but uh, he's a kid that's uh, right now, according to this week on his Twitter account, has got his team's college teams narrowed down to five, with Wisconsin being at the top of the list. So a kid who I think once his conditioning, you know, comes into play and he's ready to go he could help on both sides of the ball but you know I would expect the Vikings to you know maybe another three and six season maybe four and five but I think struggling to get in the playoffs. Sounds good here uh, on the east side where we are here with Craig there are three straight seasons of four and five football which uh, that could really eat at you you're one win away from the playoffs every year uh, perhaps this is the year where they get over that hump and get back to the playoffs for the first time since 2008. Uh, got a lot to uh, Come back, you know, not a lot coming back on offense. A lot of uh, areas they've got to fill in, but they got the seniors to do it. Uh, Shane Ellis will be the quarterback under center Friday night, and uh, you know they've got the, they've got the option offense still rolling, and I still think they're going to score a bunch of points. They scored almost 30 a game last year, uh, but the problem on was on defense. Uh, too many too many games where they were just trying to just go at each other, uh, running up the score and. Just wasn't uh, it think, wasn't their game, and I think for the most part, both city schools and both coaches will talk about getting off the field. You know, getting off the field on third down when you've got a team maybe third and eight, third and six, getting off the field, giving your defense a rest instead of giving up that third down conversion where they make ends. They end up making a, a scoring drive, which, like you said, leads to a track meet. And uh, Janesville didn't win a lot of track meets last year. Yeah, the, the one thing that the Craig defense did do is get a lot of experience, and they'll have 11 seniors, I believe, on the field starting Friday night against Beloit. Uh, for them to get back to the playoffs, I think it's important to have a hot start. They've got Beloit, Parker, and Madison East all in their first four weeks of play here. So I think if they go, th if they can find a way to go three and one, maybe win all three of those games, that sets them up and maybe gives them some confidence for the last four or five weeks of the season, uh, where they just have to get two more wins to get themselves in the playoffs. So uh, they'll be looking for a big start Friday night against uh, first-year coach Rodney Wadig down at Beloit. Fans will remember that name from uh, Bigfoot where they went on such a, a big tear over the last uh, well, almost a decade. Decade, so, basically, yep. Uh, that all starts Friday night here in the city. Uh, we'll talk about some area teams as well. Uh, maybe the most intriguing team that you see on the slate heading into this season. Who, who catches your eye from out in, out in the area here? 
I think you could look to uh, the Melton Redhawks. Uh, Coach O'Leary in his second season back at his alma mater and, and with a team that uh, returns quite a few starters and, and obviously the biggest one is quarterback Tyler Westrick, a third year starter for Coach O and a kid that really makes that offense go. Uh, can do it with his arm, can do it with his legs. He gets to the edge. He's quick enough to, to make plays. He's got a very capable target in uh, Colin Weber, Paul, who's about 6'3", 215. Great size, good speed, and they've got the big horses up front to open holes uh, for the backfield, With starting with Avery Oostenhout, who uh, second team, or I believe he was a first team Badger South selection uh, last year, and, and defensively they're led by Martinelli and McCarthy at linebacker. So I think the Red Hawks, who gave uh, defending Division three champ Monona Grove their closest game last year, 14-7. to They were actually ahead 7 to nothing in the third. Uh, I look for the Red Hawks 3-7 uh, three and, three and seven last year to possibly get to the 500 mark and, and make a little noise in the Badger South. And I'm sticking with a, a different team that's in a bit of a rebuilding mode, maybe one year more into it, but they also have a dual threat quarterback, and that's the Clinton Cougars, who got their first uh, playoff win ever in the history of their program last year with Derek Severson at quarterback. He's back. He was the uh, Rock Valley South Offense Player of the Year last year, and uh, he'll be doing some damage for the Cougars this year in, under third-year coach Jeff Spivak. And uh, they've got senior Luke Rissy. He's a three-sport guy who's always going to be dangerous, and he's brought some of the basketball players back with him. They had a pretty solid season last year. Uh, Connor Campbell at uh, running back will give them some stability there, even though they lost Jake Marquillo. And... Uh, you know, I think Clinton's out to make some noise. I don't know if they can uh, catch maybe Broadhead Judah there in the south to win the conference title, but I look for them to get back in the playoffs and, and make another run at it. I would agree, especially with Bigfoot probably going to be down a little bit, uh, new coach, and uh, lost an awful lot of talent to graduation. So I would agree. I would expect the Cougars to maybe be a top-two team in the conference and, and have a chance to have a little success in the playoffs. And uh, mentioned Broadhead Judah there that we think is probably the favorite in the South. Uh, is that the team that you think probably has the strongest uh, chance to make a deep run here this season and into the playoffs? Oh, I think so. I'm not a betting man, but if I were, I'd, uh, I'd definitely say the Cardinals uh, would have the best chance of going the furthest in the playoffs, possibly getting to Camp Randall for a, for a state title game. Um, you look it up front with Logan Maurer and Stephen Voights and Reeve Lincoln, three big kids that really uh, are going to open some holes offensively. And with... Uh, with Brennan Buscott back at uh, at quarterback, you know, a, a kid that really ran that offense well last year, uh, I think the Cardinals will aid to throne uh, Bigfoot and win that Badger South for the first time in eight years that, that Bigfoot hasn't won it. And I really do think in Division Four they, they could be a serious player uh, come playoff time. And I look to the North as another team to watch that maybe could uh, make another run in Edgerton. Uh, Ricky Williams, the leading rusher in the state last year, Kind of came out of nowhere. We didn't. I don't think any of us no. saw that coming. Uh, not a very big kid, so I think he's 160 pounds, but uh, makes, makes defenders miss, and they have to watch him streak down to the end of the, end of the field and score touchdowns all game long. And I, I think even though he's not going to be as much of a surprise factor this year, I still think you know there are plenty of guys out there that know exactly what's coming at them, and they still can't tackle Ricky. So it could be another fun team to watch. Uh, Edgerton. Still has a lot of holes to fill from a, a great senior class from a year ago, but I, I see them getting back there again and maybe making a run. Uh, I think that'll probably do it for week one Sounds here. Sounds good. Uh, we'll be back next week, week two. With Craig and Parker, week two before the school year even Ridiculous. starts. Sounds a little weird, kind of dumb, but we'll be here next week to preview that anyway. You can check out, like I said, the tab, uh, gazetteextra.com. Full slate of week one games here below this video on the website. And uh, we'll have four full games covered Friday night to check back on. So stay with us for the season. Should be a good run. Yep. Enjoy, people.